Oh. Redhead does not even upgrade its kernel gracefully. Newer ones do, but like old Redhead, if you tried to upgrade the kernel, you'd probably just hose your entire system. Ugh. See, it bothers me so much. Is like people, there are companies out there trying to be good. They make a Linux software, right? Yep. And it might be for sale. It might be for proprietary Linux. But software. that's fine. I just want software. Yeah, they make software for Linux, but they make it and they send it to you with like a distribution of like Red Hat Seven. Great. I really wanted that. They've tested it on Red Hat 7, and they've tested it with, like, Linux standard base. But then, oh, it uses this weird Red Hat thing, or, oh, it doesn't do this right. It won't work on any other distribution except for the one they've sent you. you I've had installers, and I was, I mean, it was an installer, and the script started, and it would check for some, like, system variable, but it would check for it in a form that no modern Linux uses, and then it wouldn't install because it said, oh, you're not running the right blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's like, what I would have to do is, like, under, sometimes under the hood, there's a program that will just work normally, but they've written this whole suite of install scripts to get it to install. I would go in and I would modify all the install scripts to make them just be normal and just copy the files to my hard drive that needed to be copied. <laughs> you know, and then it would be in a normal LF- LSB executable, whatever. I just run it and it would go. Yeah. You know, because I had I had this all the libraries it required, and they were just newer versions, but they were backwards compatible, and it just worked. But they write this crazy install system to make it easy for you on the Red Hat distribution they give you or something, and then it just doesn't work. Yeah. Plus, some companies, they, they make, like, a standard. Like, all right, our installs will always go this certain way. Like, IBM is real bad about this. So all the IBM software out there that you can buy, there are Linux versions of all the servers and the clients and the agents and everything. But they install, like, Windows programs. Like, they put all their stuff in, like, a folder somewhere on your file system. Mm. And then they don't put their executable in bin. They put it in, like, this crap place. Uh, uh. Yeah, it hurts. Well, I mean, sometimes if you install some things are supposed to go in opt. Like if you install open office, like, you know, it's supposed to go in slash opt slash open office and then all the files are in there and then yep. in slash user bin there's a sim link to the open office executable. Or you include slash opt slash open office slash bin in your path. Right? Or something like that. Yeah, there are a multitude of ways. Yeah. And that's the way it's supposed to be because it's like a pre-compiled program or, you know, anything that's like big like that will do that. Like in Gen 2, if you merge Firefox bin, it goes in opt Firefox bin. Yep. But if you build it, it goes in USR and everything's split up how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Which is the correct way, you know. But uh, people, they make things not inst- – people, look at it, People are making free software, free, for no money – Right, like GNU, and they follow the standards and they do things right, and things work on every distribution with almost no effort. You know, and if it's a source-based distribution, no one has to modify anything. But then there and are if people it's a that... binary distribution, one guy compiles it and it works on all the computers. Yeah, when was the last time you tried to run an RPM and it didn't install, and you were using the right version? Yeah, and you had all the dependencies, and it's, <laughs> you ins- and then it su- you did force and it successfully installed, and then it didn't run, and you modified your path and you found the file and you ran it and it didn't run. Yeah, often with an obscure error message like nothing. Yeah. It's because someone out there took the source for that program. Are you sure it was a seg fault? Are you sure it wasn't nothing? Nothing. Because someone out there took the source for that program and compiled it to work on a machine and it worked on that machine. Worked on his machine. But they didn't test it on every other machine in the known universe and any other different Linux. They only tested on like a bare Red Hat 7 install. You know, it's like you could have a Red Hat 7 install and if you add two pieces of software before you install theirs, it doesn't work because the library got replaced. You know, <laughs> these people just don't understand Linux and they make Linux software like Windows software. It's just not good. But the people who do it for free often do a better job. Because people do it for free know what they're doing. Yeah. Problem is that the people who, you know, trying to make something to sell don't listen to the people who do it for free. And if they gave them some money, they could probably be rich. But no, now they're just they're just schmoes. <laughs> And that was Geek Nights with Rem and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music. Thanks for listening. Please remember to point your favorite podcatcher at feeds.feedburner.com slash geeknights to get the latest episodes as soon as they're released. Also, please visit our website at www.frontrowcrew.com for the latest updates and forum discussions. 
And whether you love or hate our podcast, we won't know unless you send your feedback to us at geeknights at gmail.com.